Hey bag ladies and bag dudes, today I'm going to be talking about the Ruby Minder, the pricing calculator app for your cell phone, Ruby Star Society Fabrics. I'll be reviewing two books. The first is the Ultimate Thread Guide and the second is the All-in-One Quilters Reference Tool. I'll be demonstrating how to modify the Creative Maker Supply Case so that you can add multiple sizes of different items to your case and there's a great giveaway at the end. I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing. Hey everybody, happy Sunday. Thank you so much for joining me for Social Sunday. I saw everyone chatting before the show. Colette is watching. Uh, Jaina from Texas. Jackie from North Dakota. I saw some folks from Australia and New Zealand. Um, so all sorts of uh, places around the world are being represented tonight. Thank you for joining me for Social Sunday. Before I get started, just a friendly reminder, just about everything that I talk about during Social Sunday are things that I purchased myself. So these are not things that I'm getting paid to talk to you about, but just cool things that I found that I'd like to share with you. And also as a reminder, everything that I'm scheduled to talk about, I link to in the description. So if you're interested in finding out more about any of the notions, fabrics, books, or projects that I talk about during Social Sunday. Just check that link in the description and you can find out more information there. So as always, my favorite is the notion of the week and the notion for this week is the Ruby Minder um, acrylic template from Wisecraft and this is sort of a spin on a previous product uh, that Wisecraft came out with, um, a ruler. Um, what I really like about the, this new Ruby Minder tool is that can, it can also, um, in addition to finding values of fabrics, it can also hold embroidery flosses. So it's kind of a, a dual purpose tool. Um, reading from the packaging, um, the thread minder keeps your embroidery thread organized um, on these little holes over here. And then um, the, the pink color of the acrylic makes it a value tool. So what that means is um, you can look through the acrylic at your fabric or thread if you're um, working on some hand sewing such as embroidery and you can see the the light and dark values and choose either colors or fabrics that will um, contrast each other so that not everything all blends in so i have a couple projects one's a quilt and one's a pouch um, to sort of demonstrate using this tool um, the way that I like to use it best is actually to hold it up to my eye and look through it so that I can see a wider uh, range of uh, field. Um, but for the purposes of having a camera and being on the live show, I'm just going to kind of do my best to hold it over my fabrics so that you can get the general idea. So I'm going to step over to the side camera and show you what, what the tool does. Okay, so this is a close-up of what the tool is. Again, the cutouts for your embroidery floss. and. I pulled out a quilt that I made a few years ago. This is a quilt that I made from Tula Pink's uh, City Sampler book. And I chose to make the six inch quilt blocks using um, each block is just a single color. So I have my green blocks, my blue blocks, all the colors of the rainbow. So the, the blocks that only have the two colors, it's a little bit easier to tell light and dark value. Um, let me just hold it up. As you can see by looking through the acrylic, you can see the the darker portion over here this is my darker green fabric and the lighter portion over here that's the lighter green fabric it's much easier to see with blocks with only two fabrics but i'm going to show you a few blocks also with more than two fabrics where it's really necessary to be able to see the values so that you don't have um, a bunch of um, geometric shapes that are all blending into each other so this example over here um, to my naked eye, I felt like I chose three fabrics that were contrasting different ranges of light through dark. But before the show, when I was holding my tool up over here, um, these two fabrics, this one and this one, are quite close. And I probably could have done a better job if I had this tool at the time in selecting fabrics that had a little bit more of a variance. I'm going to slide the quilt over and show you this, this block over here. This block has four different shades of blue in it. Um, and using the tool, you can see that the, the shades that I, that I happened to choose at the time are variances of colors. So I did, I feel like I did a pretty good job with this particular block. It also applies to your projects where you're making um, pouches or bags. So here's 
um, a Bellevue pouch made for me by Christy from Rock Baby Scissors. She's a really big fan of using rainbow fabrics and if I just kind of glide this tool over the fabrics, you can see that some of the fabrics are bigger value variances than others. For example, these two fabrics right here, looking through the tool, they're kind of close in color as opposed to these two over here. Um, you can clearly see that the, the light and dark values, um, there's a bigger uh, range than these two blue fabrics that I showed you. Um, so what does that mean for choosing fabrics for bags? So in some of my bag projects where I have perhaps um, accents or I'd like to use multiple fabrics that are kind of like coordinating fabrics, um, either visually looking at the fabrics before um, actually cutting them out and sewing them up in your bag or using a tool such as the Ruby Minder is helpful because um, I, I know it happens to me quite often as well. I choose fabrics that seemed like they were a good idea for the project, but when I finished the bag, I felt like either um, they didn't quite coordinate or the fabrics were too close together so that you couldn't see the different features in the bag, such as um, tabs connected to straps. Maybe it's too close, um, too close of a coordinating fabric to the main body of the fabric and everything kind of blends in. Um, tools like this, um, and it, or again, just visually thinking about those things, choosing your light and dark values uh, when choosing fabrics for quilts or bags can be helpful. Um, you might be more pleased in your finished bag. So again, this is uh, the Ruby Minder tool from Wisecraft and it's linked to in the description in case you'd like to find out more information about that. So another cool item that I wanted to mention, someone recently mentioned, actually a few people mentioned recently in the Soul Sweetness Facebook group, um, a craft pricing calculator app. So I did some investigating. I downloaded several crafts or pricing apps on my cell phone and I found one. Um, this one is available on um, both Android and Apple. It's actually called craft pricing calculator. So super simple. It says exactly what it does. And I found, felt like out of the apps that I downloaded, this was the best one. So um, I see a lot of questions from people who are making bags or pouches to sell. How do I figure out how to sell them for? So um, I would like to uh, direct your eye to the three little dots on the upper right hand corner. If you click on those um, after you've downloaded the app, you can uh, change to different currencies. Um, I live in the United States, so I've got dollar set. You can have pounds, euros, what have you. So you just enter a few quick items at the top half of the app and hit the calculate button and the app tells you what you should be selling your items for. So um, the first uh, four items are, I feel, mandatory. Uh, the fifth one, which is the retail profit margin, is optional depending on how you're selling your products and where and to whom. Um, so I'm just gonna go through my app on my phone that I have and uh, plug in a couple numbers and it will tell me how much that I should be selling my project for. So in this case, I'm gonna be doing a pouch similar to the one that I showed that Christy made, the Bellevue pouch. This is a rather quick pouch to make. Quicker, smaller projects are usually the best from what I've seen um, among chatting in the Facebook group because uh, less, they're less, expen less expensive, they're less time consuming, and people at a craft fair are more likely to pick up um, something that still looks really cool but isn't as much a, of a dollar commitment. So um, in the app, I'm going to enter uh, for the first line $10 for cost of materials because it's a small project. Even though it has interfacing, there's no hardware in that particular pouch. Number of items made, um, depending on if you're making things assembly line style, you might want to increase that. For this example, I'm just going to enter in one. Um, this pouch would probably take me about an hour cutting and sewing time, so I'm going to enter one hour in. Um, I would like to, for my uh, sewing craft, uh, be paid $20 an hour, so I entered that in and I left the retail profit margin blank and I'll talk about that more in a second. So I'm just gonna hit the calculate button on my app and um, the app tells me that I, be sh I should be selling my item based on the things that I input into the app for $30. So that's helpful. Um, I wanted to mention about the retail profit margin. Um, you can decide to enter a few things. I feel like you should arrive at a rule first and then going forward you can use the same percentage uh, for all of your items. So. Um, an example for the retail profit margin, if I'm making 20 pouches to sell to my local Hallmark shop 
and they would like to um, bump up the price uh, 50 percent margin which is uh, a common margin for wholesale pricing um, that 50 percent margin can be entered into the app if you're doing consignment you might go with a smaller percentage such as, such as 25 percent you may might allow yourself 10 percent um, so those are some th things to keep in mind. You just need to decide what you'd like to do before you start using the app. Also, cost of materials. You might want to consider if you're buying everything at retail price. Um, you might want to try to find um, a wholesale distributor to, to purchase your fabric or purchase in bulk quantities to keep your pricing down and so you can have a, a bigger profit margin. So I thought that app was pretty cool. I also linked to in the description um, if you're not big into your, using your cell phone, um, there's also a web website that has a sim similar calculator. So I've linked to that website as well. So you have three options, um, an Android app, an Apple app, and also just a plain old website calculator. So hopefully um, that's helpful to you. Heidi says that is a great pricing tool. Is the app free? Uh, the app is free. Um, there's a paid version if you'd like to get rid of the ads because I was using the app a little bit earlier today and there are advertisements. Um, for example, when I first opened the app, there was a quick uh, maybe 10 second advertisement. I just sat through it and then I continued on with the app. Um, so that's the free version and if, if the ads don't bother you, then um, the free version should suit you just fine. Um, all right, so Danny's favorite part of the Sunday show, we'd like to invite all the bag ladies and bag dudes to stand proud. Let us know in the comments. We really love seeing every Sunday the stream of Bag Lady and Bag Dude comments come through on either Facebook or YouTube. And we really appreciate your support and thank you so much for being part of our community. So I've added a bunch of new fabrics to my stash this week, all from Ruby Star Society, who is formerly of Cotton and Steel. Now they're with Moda and their new brand name is Ruby Star Society. So I've got some really cool blenders as well as, as some various illustrated fabrics to show you. So I'm gonna jump over to the side camera. Let's start with, um, if you're a fan of blenders or monochromatic prints, uh, we'll start with these first. Um, I actually bought this particular print. It's um, oh, kind of more of a slightly cream background with uh, speckles of red, blue, pink, and yellow. So I thought this would be a really cool and interesting background fabric for some uh, solid blocks. I'm not sure what blocks I'll be working on yet. Um, but here's the whole stack so you can get a, a nice side view. Almost all of these particular um, speckled fabrics, which the fabric line is actually called speckled, most of these have some metallics in them. So I'm just going to go ahead and briefly flip through the whole entire stack. So this one is just cream and gold. I showed you this one a second ago. This one's got um, a gray base, but it still has some color to it. And this one's uh, the gray base, or actually more of a cream base with some metallic in it. And these are all metallic unless I let you know otherwise. So the metallic in most of them is the gold. And if I kind of flip this fabric around, you can probably pick up the gold on the camera. This one has a copper metallic, which is pretty cool. And then most of the rest of these are just the gold metallic mixed in with some color. So I thought the range of colors was really interesting. I especially liked the, we'll get to the, the pink that's my favorite in a second. Um, but I thought these would make great linings, especially I'm a really big fan of um, hoarding different uh, monochromatic fabrics to use for lining. So this one's my favorite from the bunch. It's really bright. I like that one a lot. So the reason I like hoarding fabrics such as these for linings is because sometimes I don't necessarily purchase um, big graphic prints with um, a second print from the fabric line. I usually just buy tons and tons of endless large scale prints. And then I like to keep all of these uh, blender fabrics on hand so that I can easily match whatever large scale print that I'm working on for a bag. Or they make really good straps or accents as well. This is a really pretty green as well. For this one, I just picked up a fat quarter bundle because I wasn't exactly sure yet what I would be making. And I also wanted to see the colors of the fabrics in person. So a fat quarter bundle for me was a good way to do that. And this blue looks really great. This is kind of like an ocean blue. Okay, so that's all of the Ruby Star Society speckled fabrics. Let me pull out my stack of 
some of the prints. So this fabric line that I'm going to be showing you right now is called Darlings. So these are reprints and recolorations of previous popular prints. You may have seen these mustig prints before. Um, these are my favorites. These are quilting cottons. Here's a really cute hedgehog print. This one's got some metallic in it. And then this octopus print also has metallic in it as well. So these are the quilting cottons, and I also picked up some prints in rayon for, um, rayon's good for garments, and I've also used it for bags in the past by just adding some Pellon Shape Flex uh, to the wrong side of the fabric first before attaching it to the foam interfacing. So I thought these would be really cool. This is, I don't know, this would be great for a kitchen, I thought. Um, these particular uh, curvy prints are really large scale, so it's basically, I'm not sure if this can pick up on the camera since it's so big. Um, but these are basically just swirls of fabric, kind of like rainbows. Um, and it, was, it came in a few different colorways. So this is that same print with the rainbows in more of a pink and, pink and blue pastel print. Um, here's one in oranges and purples. And then I've got another one over here. I think I showed you this one before. This one had some green and orange to it. This cheetah print I thought was really cool. I picked up this one in um, a gray background fabric. And then I really loved these last two cat prints. Again, these are both rayons, but I'm not sure if I'll use them in a dress or in something else. So it's a really great large scale floral with the cat print. And it also came in a second colorway as well. Uh, this, this blue, I guess, daytime cat prints. Um, and again, cats peeking out from of the garden. So again, these these last few were rayons, um, but these all these fabrics were designed by uh, Ruby Star Society, and um, I'm always excited to add new fabrics to my stash, and um, especially having some garment fabrics thrown in there, um, quite exciting. So I have a question for you. Let me know in the comments. What color of fabric do you find yourself using least, uh, the least amount of the time? Uh, for me personally, I guess you probably know from watching past shows that uh, I don't use a whole lot of brown in my fabrics. Um, I'm not sure if it's uh, because I, of certain fabric designers that I follow, um, but I find myself using brown the least amount of the time. Uh, I don't know about you, but let me go ahead and let me know either on Facebook or YouTube, wherever you're watching. Uh, Billy Joe says, looks like these would be great compliments to cork. Oh, they sure would. Uh, I'm trying to metallic think. Metallic speckles. Anyway. Yeah, Danny's suggesting those metallic That's speckled. When she made that comment. Oh, uh, thank you, Danny. Uh, Danny said Billy Joe mentioned the uh, speckled fabrics would be great with the metallic corks. Uh, we have a lot of different metallics in the shop. Um, some naturals with various metallics. The black with silver is a really popular metallic, um, and there's a whole bunch more. So yeah, that's a great idea to use those speckled. Kathleen says, "Do you always buy fat quarters?" Actually, I find usually I buy at least uh, a half yard to a yard piece of fabric um, because most of the time I'm planning on using the fabric for bags. Some of the blender fabrics, like the speckle that I showed you, um, I like also making quilt blocks with either solids or near solids, which, which those monochromatic fabrics would fall, fall into that category. Um, and so that's why I purchased that particular speckled bundle in the fat quarters because I thought there was a really good chance that I might use it for a quilt pattern. Um, but yeah, normally I buy bigger increments like half yard or one yard. Janet says, where did you get the fabrics? I've actually placed some links in the description for all the fabrics that I showed. And I broke it down by um, the fabric lines because they were from several different fabric lines. So you can find that in the description and all of the links are there. All right, so I have actually two book reviews for you tonight. And these are both uh, really compact books. They're more, uh, pocket guides or purse guides for um, thread and quilting. So I'm gonna jump over back over to the side camera and show you both of those two books. Okay, so the first one is called The Ultimate Thread Guide, Everything You Need to Know to Choose the Perfect Thread for Every Project. So often on Social Sunday, we see questions about um, what kind of thread, what weight of thread, and so this book is a little over 50 pages and it, it, it addresses all those questions about thread weight as well as different uh, all the different thread manufacturers and I bookmarked a few pages so that I could show you um, some of the features in the book so the, 
The beginning of the book talks about the different thread fibers. Cotton is pretty common as well as polyester. So those are both described in great detail exactly what goes into the thread, what they're made out of, what are they like in person. So all of that's addressed in the book. I really liked the part about thread weight uh, because thread weight can be confusing and it, it's especially confusing as I found out when reading this book uh, because threads are classified in three different systems, weight, uh, WT or weight, um, the count or ply, or uh, the text number, which is the weight in grams per 1,000 meters of thread. So um, I, I see that it's more confusing than I originally thought. Um, the thread that I use is commonly referred to as weight, but I honestly, I didn't know that there were all these other um, systems in place as well. So I can see how it would be quite confusing and this book breaks it down in better detail. Um, also choosing the right type of thread and comparing thread thickness, smoothness, fuzziness, does it have a lot of lint in it, those kinds of things. <clears throat> because thread and machine needles go hand in hand, machine needles are also talked about briefly um, in this particular book, and I actually, I think it was maybe a year and a half ago, I talked about needles specifically for bag making. So in case you missed that, um, you can find the YouTube channel, Needles for Bag Making, on the So Sweetness channel. How thread is made. So the book also talks about how thread is prepared in the factory. I thought this particular portion of the book was really interesting. And then the last half of the book is all of the different thread manufacturers. So Orifil is my favorite. Um, the book talks about all the different offerings that they have because they, they don't only have, uh, you know, cotton 40 weight thread, which is what I use. There's other offerings um, on this side, what needle is suggested to be used for each different type of thread. And all the other different thread manufacturers are represented as well. Coates and Clark, um, Filtex, Superior Threads, and so on. And that comprises the last half of the book. So I thought this was a really helpful guide, especially if you like knowing a lot about all of the diff different aspects of your sewing. And then the second book that I wanted to show you today is the All-in-One Quilters Reference Tool. And especially if you're really into math or figuring different things out, um, I think you might find this book helpful. So this book is over 70 pages long and it's tons of charts, measurements, all that is included in the book. Um, what different size mattress, uh, what size comforter or bedspread or quilt you should have um, if you want the quilt to overhang off your bed by a certain amount of, of inches, how big you should make the quilt. Um, I actually, actually had never thought about that before regarding the drop, um, but I like that those figures are represented. So I'm just going to flip through a few of the pages to give you a small sampling of what's represented. But again, this page is, this book is almost 100 pages. so. Um, quite a lot is covered. So um, let's see, uh, quilt blocks, how many quilt blocks uh, that you can get for different sizes, uh, different measurements for squares, uh, diagonal measurements for squares, sashing pieces. Uh, I'm not super into math, but I can tell that this would be really pleasing and exciting for a lot of you that are how many rectangles or squares you can cut from, say, a, a one yard piece of fabric, a two yard piece of fabric, and so on. Uh, yardage for your quilt backing, how big is your quilt, how, ma how many yards of fabric would you need for the backing of 42 inch wide fabric, that is. Um, bias strips, um, if you're using bias strips for either bags or clothing, um, how wide of a strip and how many uh, strips can you get from a piece of fabric different shapes, again, how many you can cut from uh, specified sizes of fabric, seam allowances covered, tension, um, so all sorts of interesting things are covered in the book, uh, especially if you're a quilter, flying geese, how many and what sizes you can cut out, cut out from certain amounts of fabric. A few quilt blocks are covered in the back, but for the majority of the book, it is charts like what I showed you in the example, and there's a whole lot more um, that I didn't show you, but there's definitely a lot um, encompassed in each of those little books. Um, so I've linked to both of those books in the description if you're interested in picking those up or finding out more information about either of those books. So I have another question for you. Let me know what is your favorite thread. 
I really like using Orifil 40 weight thread for bag making. It's 100% cotton thread. I know a lot of you like using polyester threads um, and so on. So let me know in the comments what your favorite thread is. All right, so my demonstration for tonight is uh, a question that I got a couple times in the past week about the Creative Maker supply case. So let me just show you that project first. Um, so that we can get reacquainted with what the Creative Maker Supply Case looks like. So the Creative Maker Supply Case is a zipper case. It comes in three different sizes. This is size large. And when unzipped on the inside, there's space for holding either coloring books or notebooks on one side with the pockets. There's some pockets over here. And uh, the main portion um, and the excitement is in the pencils or markers that can be held using elastics and I use color, colored elastics um, here for this particular project. Uh, I get questions often about where to find cool colors of elastic. So I've actually linked to that in the description of tonight's show in case you'd like to pick up some really fun bright colors of elastics to use in future projects. So this particular pattern, the instructions for this project are for pencils. So the elastic is predetermined to hold uh, either pencils or colored pencils or something the same width as a pencil. So what do you do if you have larger items that you'd like to hold in your case, such as um, chunky markers? Um, I've seen some people make this case um, either in the small or medium version for diabetic supplies, um, inhalers, medical uh, uh, prescriptions, all sorts of different things. And obviously those are thicker and different sizes than uh, the pencils that I showed you here. So. I'm gonna step over to the side camera with a few little bits of elastic and we're gonna talk about how to modify the elastic for the Creative Maker Supply Case to hold other items. Okay, so I'm gonna open my case one more time so I can show you those pencils with the elastics. And I grabbed a few items before the show that were different widths, not that I'd necessarily like to, to make a case for these items, but I tried to choose items that were all sorts of different widths. So here's. Um, some makeup eye remover that I found. Obviously the bottle's quite thick compared to the pencils. Um, and I, I pulled a few other different sizes of items that I thought uh, we could talk about for this demonstration. So first let's talk about the elastic. So I pulled out a few, a couple different um, widths of elastic. This blue one is a quarter of an inch wide. And this one right here is from By Annie's. It's 5 eighths of an inch, and this is fold over elastic. So fold over elastic just means it's uh, got a nice finish on both sides. And if you prefer, um, because there's a line down the middle, you can fold it over and finish um, either mesh or raw edges, or you can just use it simply as elastic for the Creative Maker Supply Case. So, all right, first we're going to measure um, the elastic and see, because in the pattern instructions, I direct you to make markings on your elastic um, in certain increments uh, to hold the pencils. But what do we do if we need to hold the elastic to hold my other items that I showed you? All right, so we'll start off with this big bottle right here. And by the way, before um, you get started using uh, the elastic for this project, I highly recommend grabbing a much longer piece of elastic than you think because you can always cut it down. But if you purchase and cut your elastic to a shorter piece like my blue piece right here. Um, if you end up having the piece not be long enough, then you're kind of stuck. So always work with much longer of a length than you think you'll need. Okay, so I'm gonna start off by marking the elastic half an inch in because I'm gonna be starting from this end of the elastic. I'm gonna bring my marking so that it hits uh, the table on the other, on the right hand side of my bottle. And then you want to pull the elastic to the other side to the same increment and you want to pull because every elastic um, is stretchier or less stretchy so these two elastics were not the same amount of stretchiness when i was playing with them before the show so you want to use the actual elastic that you think you'll use for the project and you want to pull it as tight as you want it so if you want it to be like a super tight hold for the item not to move then in, while you're doing your figuring, hold it tightly across the item as well. So I'm gonna take my marking pen, I'm gonna move the bottle for just a second, and I'm gonna mark the elastic. And so when I start adding this to my lining fabric in the case, this is how far apart I'll be stitching my items. I'll be stitching directly on top of these two lines. Okay, so what if we wanna add 
my other two items in the same case as well. So obviously this bottle is uh, quite a bit um, less wide than the first one. So I'm gonna do the same thing, pull the elastic to the other end, kind of use my fingernail to hold that in place. Obviously you can see that these are different widths that I've marked on the elastic. And here's my Clover Chaco, kind of a skinnier item. And let's get that marked as well. Okay, so if you're following the instructions in your Creative Maker Supply Case, um, when you come to the portion where you'll be stitching on top of the elastic, this is where you'll be stitching. So based on these items, how do we figure out where exactly we're sewing the elastic? I just grabbed a random piece of fabric um, because this is what I had on, in the sewing room before the show, but how do we know where exactly we're sewing the elastic down? So I'm gonna grab, let me grab my other Chaco. Let's say we want this bottle to be first in the line because that's where we've marked the elastic. I'm gonna use a wonder clip to hold this end over here. So what we need to do to get this marked on the fabric is actually to mark uh, the width of the item, not going around it, but just actually the width. So I'm gonna take my ruler and this measures um, almost an inch and three quarters. So my seam allowance as directed in the pattern is a quarter of an inch. So we'll start with that half inch just as we did with marking the elastic because we marked it a half inch over. So I'm gonna take my chalk and mark in that half an inch. And when I measured this, this item, it was an inch and, and three quarters wide. So I'm gonna mark that on my fabric as well. So now I want the next item to be right next to it and this bottle is the next item. The width of the bottle is one inch. So I'm gonna measure one inch in. And then the width of my Clover Chaco is half an inch. So my next marking will be a half an inch. So when you go to attach the elastic to your lining fabric, let me push some of these items out of the way. Obviously you'll be starting on the edge of the fabric. This is the first stitching line right here. The next stitching line, let me grab some pins. You can either hold these with your finger as you go along or you can use some traditional pins. So my next line will be lined up right here. And obviously you'll be using the markings in the pattern to make sure you, you've got a nice horizontal line to stitch everything down straight. The second line will be lined up with the second line that I marked in chalk on my lining fabric. All right, and then my third line, same thing, you're matching, basically you're matching all of your lines up. And you'll continue on until you have all of your elastics sewn down and all of your markings on your lining fabric. So you might need to do a little bit of adjusting. I feel pretty good about the measurements and having everything have enough space uh, to be inserted into the case. Obviously, if you're working with super thick items like this, you may need to um, add some fabric to the width of the zipper because the zipper, the handbag zipper is only so wide. But I feel like this is a pretty good method for adjusting and adding other items uh, to your elastic. So let's see if the pins hold in place. As you can see, that's a pretty good fit for uh, that first bottle and you'll add your other bottles and you might consider also adding spacing in between them so that your bottles aren't all jammed up or depending on what, what items you're placing inside. So. Hopefully that was helpful and demonstrates how to modify that case because honestly the Creative Maker Supply Case is one of my favorite projects to sew. Um, not, not counting the cutting time, I can sew one in about two to three hours and I feel like it's a really nice personalized and impressive gift and uh, my mom made I think the size small for her um, uh, tablet. Uh, medium is also a great size for tablets and charging cords and um, it's just a really great project to personalize for whatever you need to put inside it. Alright, so I'm going to be answering some questions live. So if you have a question for me, either a sewing related question, question about a notion or tool, um, or a bag making question, go ahead and type your question right now in the comments on Facebook or YouTube. Before we get over to the questions, I wanted to announce the winner of last show's giveaway. So the winner of that giveaway was Lisa R over on YouTube. So congratulations to Lisa. When you get a chance, please, uh, I've contacted you on social media, but go ahead and send me an email so that I have your contact information so that we can get you set up with your prize. 
All right, Danny's got some really great, great questions queued up. Betty says, what bag is Sarah holding? I think Betty was talking about the bag in uh, the description photo for the live show tonight. So this was from Minikin season one. Uh, the Bellevue pouch, Christy from Rock Baby Scissors made this one and she pieced a bunch of rainbow colored strips and this is size large for the Bellevue. So there's two smaller sizes as well. Um, Teresa wants to know, are you getting more cork in soon? Uh, we do have a, a few rolls of cork that we got in right before the weekend. So we'll be working on getting those cut, it, cut and relisted in the shop. And I think there's a few new cork um, fabrics that I'm eyeing to order. Um, I wanted to ask you guys on the show also, if you've purchased and used cork fabric before, do you tend to use um, the solid colors? So maybe natural, black, brown, jeans blue maybe. Or have you ever used some of the prints? Um, we've carried some prints in the past and we have a couple still in stock in the shop. Uh, the elephant print and the rose garden print being the most popular. Do you like using the prints also? Or do you prefer to use uh, the prints in your quilting cotton and then follow it up with a, a solid or a neutral? So let me know because there were a bunch of new prints that I was looking at but not sure if I should order them or not to be honest. Karen says, are all the cotton and steel design designers now called Ruby Star Society? So yes. Um, the designers that were previously with Cotton and Steel have reformed under the company Moda Fabrics and now they are called Ruby Star Society. Cotton and Steel um, as a company name still exists, but the designers are different. So um, I've noticed they've been using some guest designers, uh, but if you liked the old Cotton and Steel fabrics from a couple years ago, um, they're now called Ruby Star Society. Um, Karen says, do you sew with leather? What weight of thread and brand of thread is best for hide leather? So I have in the past, um, Superior Threads actually makes a really good thread for um, sewing with leather, especially if you're concerned over time of your threads uh, changing the look or feel of the actual leather. Um, they have a really good one. Um, and again, it's Superior Threads. Um, I've sewed with leather a very limited uh, amount of times in the past and the leathers that I used were um, sort of a prismatic uh, rainbow colored leather. So I used my trusty Orifil 40 weight thread for those projects just because I wanted the threads to closely match. But um, yeah, there's a few really good threads out there that you can use if you're using actual real leather. Lori says, Sarah, do you use Orifil for garment sewing as well? That's a really great question. I actually prefer to use um, polyester thread for garment sewing, especially if I'm using my serger because a lot of the garments that I am making are on the serger only. In that case, I don't use uh, Orifil thread. Um, I believe the threads in my serger currently are from Superior Threads also. It's been quite a while since I used the serger, but uh, I took it out of the, the cabinet the other day and I noticed the thread cones were still on there. So yeah, I had superior threads on those. Erica says, I wanna make one with vinyl pockets. What weight should I use? Um, I've used, I'm not sure if you're talking about the clear vinyl for the pockets, but I've used the Orifil 40 weight thread for um, sewing with clear vinyl before and I was pretty happy with the results. Bonnie says, colored elastic has been a challenge to find. Yeah, normally when I go to the big box store, they pretty much just have white or black. So that's why I wanted to link in tonight's show the link where a whole variety of different colored elastics are available. I linked to an Etsy shop for the colored elastics and I've actually purchased from them before, including those pink elastics that I showed you in the Creative Maker Supply case. So there's tons of colors. I noticed I purchased these colors, colored elastics a couple years ago. I noticed there's even more colors than um, I've noticed in the past. So um, rainbow assortment of colors available. Sarah, where do you order your Orifil threads? So there's a few different um, ways you can find Orifil. Your local quilt shop might carry it. Um, Fat Quarter Shop has some colors and if you want access to every Orifil thread or if you like using a different brand thread, Red Rock Threads online carries uh, pretty much every thread brand and thread weight and thread color you could ever imagine. So that's redrockthreads.com and that's for thread. Um, does thread go bad? If so, how do you know when? 
Uh, that's a really great, great question. I'm not sure if I have the answer. I sort of feel like I have half the answer. So when I first started sewing, my grandmother gave me some of her old threads or threads that she picked up from garage sales. And um, some of them I found to be really linty or my machine just really balked it, balked it. I'm saying that wrong, uh, really threw a fit when I tried to use uh, those balked. particular, yeah, balked, thank you, Danny. My machine threw a fit when trying to use some of those older threads. So um, I feel pretty confident about the thread that I use right now, the Orifil. Um, there's other trusted brands out there as well, um, but you wanna look, especially on the sales rack for a thread not to look super linty. I'm not sure if this has happened to you before, but I have gone into the store on numerous occasions and tried uh, different thread brands and some of them look lint lintier than others and you can actually see it, especially if you pull a little piece of thread off or maybe you have some in your stash that are like this. Um, uh, I feel like, especially in the finished project, the nicer the thread looks on the spool, the nicer the top stitching uh, will look on your finished project for sure. Um, but if anyone else has any other tips on um, older thread usage or um, if you have any opinions on that, feel free to pipe up in the comments. Danny will look through some of those There's and one, like, oh, Danny's got one. Okay, thank you, Danny. Danny's quick at the draw at uh, looking through the comments. Carol says, if you have old thread, put it in the freezer and it puts the moisture back in it. I didn't know that. Thank you so much for that little tidbit, Carol. Um, what is your opinion on decreasing your stitch when sewing corners? Um, actually, I haven't thought about it before. I'd be curious to try that out though. Um, I can see why decreasing the stitch might be helpful, especially when sewing through the corners. Um, especially if you're not sewing slowly or sewing in a continuous line through the curve. Sometimes the stitches get a little bit further apart. Um, I can see why decreasing the stitches would be helpful for that. I haven't personally tried it, but um, it does seem like a useful thing to do. So I'll keep that in mind to try it on my next uh, curvaceous project, I guess you could say. Anita says, have you ever used denim in a bag? Um, I'm trying to think if I have. Danny, do you ever remember me using denim in a bag? No. I haven't. The reason I had to ask Danny is I have a bunch of den different weights of denim in my stash. I have seen a lot of people make really great yes. projects in the Facebook group, either from den denim or re jeans. repurposed denim, like from jeans or jackets, uh, saving the pockets, um, those types of things. So I know it can definitely be done. I guess I just haven't done it myself just yet. Linda says, what thread has the least amount of fuzz? Um, Hi, I wish I could remember the blog post. I remember reading a blog post a couple years ago where they compared different thread brands under a microscope. So as you can imagine under a microscope, it's really apparent which ones are, which ones have a lot of lint and fuzz and which ones don't. Um, if I, I'm gonna write myself a note and maybe next Sunday if I can find that blog post, um, we'll talk about it next Sunday on Social Sunday. Thread fuzz, okay. Um, Dawn says, have you heard anything from Tula Pink's new fabric line yet? Um, her next fabric line is coming out in March and it's called Handmade. So it's a bunch of sewing themed imagery, sewing machines, um, rotary cutters, scissors, um, needle and thread with cute little hands holding the thread. So it's really cute. And again, it's called Handmade. Shannon said, hi, Sarah, would you please consider making a template for the Faithwell storage bin circles? I'm spoiled by the templates and would love this circle template. That's a really good one. Um, I'm gonna write a note for that as well. We haven't come out with a new acrylic template in a hot minute, so I think that would be a good one for a new template. Uh, Venus says, what is that red bag behind you? Uh, Sorry, the camera's kind of a mirror image, so that's why I turned the wrong way just a second ago. Uh, this is the Renegade bag. Um, it's made using white cork fabric for the handles and the accents and the red fabric is um, as far as I'm aware it's out of print unfortunately because I made uh, I purchased this fabric some years ago but it is a hand printed fabric uh, made in Australia and the company is called Ink and Spindle I'm pretty sure that's inkandspindle.com but they have other hand printed fabrics in stock which are beautiful as well. Linda says if you make a bag with cork and you need to turn it right side out how does that work with the cork? Um, it's, uh, I wouldn't say it's stiff. Um, it's a little bit different than turning the bag right side out. Uh, if the bag's only made with quilting cotton, 
you may want to allow yourself, um, especially if you have the opening in the lining that you need to turn, you might want to, want to allow yourself a little bit larger of an opening um, so that you have more space to uh, accommodate the fabric and the cork and all the interfacing, of course. Tammy says, I liked those stick pins you used. What brand were they? Um, that's a great question. Um, let me see. Uh, I think these are magic pins. Um, they have silicone. Danny, can I jump over to the side camera? Can I show these pins up close? Is that okay? Okay, so these were, yeah, if you could zoom in, that would be great. They come in different uh, thicknesses, different varieties or for different uses, like for quilters. Uh, but um, Magic Pins is the name. I like the fact that they have the silicone heads because you can iron over these. Traditional pins um, sometimes have plastic heads, which those I've melted those before. Um, so I really like these a lot. And like I said, they have different uh, pins for different uses and different thicknesses. Um, Ma yeah, Magic Pins. I'm pretty sure that was the name. I'm like 90% sure. <laughs> so please, someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm I'm pretty feeling, feeling pretty confident about that name. Bonnie says, what would you do to make the Creative Maker hold a thicker book? So that's a really great question. Um, the handbag zipper, because the fabric can, um, I don't want to say stretch because that would not be the right word. Um, it can accommodate, uh, I would say around an inch in thickness of an item as long as the item is not um, taking up the whole entire size of the case if that makes sense so if you're placing a notebook inside your notebook's a little bit smaller uh, your notebook can be an inch thick and it should still fit inside if you're working with items that are thicker than an inch you'll likely need to add some um, uh, either a fabric band to one side or to both sides of the zipper and the zipper tab um, so to do that, you would just, uh, before sewing the zipper to your main panel, which is the front and back of the case, you would just stitch um, an exterior and lining fabric to your zipper on, like I said, either one side on one long edge or both long edges of the zipper after you've attached it to the tab already. So it should already be um, a continuous ring. Um, and then you'll add that extra fabric on there for um, thicker items. Kathleen says, Sarah, how can I avoid the bunching and funky area where zipper ends and fabric begins um, at the curves or corners of the bags? Um, just let me read this question one more time just so I can make sure I've got it. Corners of the bag. Zipper ends and the fabric begins. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm guessing you don't mean something like this where the zipper goes through the curve and the fabric comes here. Um, I, I feel like I've been having this problem lately where some of the questions are self-explanatory, but when I'm reading them on the show, they're just not clicking in my brain. So Kathleen, feel free to email me after the show and we can dive deeper, a little bit deeper into your question. My email is sarah at sosweetness.com and that's Sarah with no H. <laughs> Sorry about that. Erica says, what weight vinyl do you recommend for pockets for the creative maker? So if you're using... The clear vinyl, which I think based on your previous question, you might have been. Um, I personally like using either 8 gauge clear vinyl or 12 gauge for pockets, especially with things going in and coming out. I think the 12 gauge would serve you a little bit better, be a little bit sturdier. Um, and again, that's the 12 gauge clear vinyl. Doreen says, what is the smallest width increments you can sew that elastic? I'd like to do a case for crochet hooks, which are smaller than pencils. So. Um, I don't personally crochet, but one of my pattern testers that tested this particular project made, I think it was the smaller medium size for her crochet hooks. I don't know what increments that she used, but I know for sure, I can assure you that it can be done because I've seen several cases since then made for crochet hooks. Um, again, you'll probably just want to verify using that method that I showed you with the elastics um, and the lining fabric in case you need to make it um, less wide um, if they're a lot thinner than the standard pencil. Janet says, I bought a pattern with, without the video. Can I still buy the video now? Sure. Um, any of our patterns that have videos already, there's an option in the product listing for video only, and you can just go ahead and click that and proceed, and um, that uh, will just give you the video by itself if you already have the pattern. 
Um, Denise says, will you ever get some vinyl with designs? Um, honestly, I'm not sure. Um, so when I look at ordering new products, I look at uh, how past products have done. So for us, uh, cork is probably our biggest seller for fabric, would you say, Danny? Um, the glitter vinyl comes next and the faux leather um, comes last. And so um, I guess, I don't know, maybe I just need to find a, a super exciting print for the vinyl. Um, but I'm always open to different things. Um, again, we just try to take into consideration uh, what's selling better than other things and uh, space also, because we're spaces at a premium in our studio. Um, Danny's nodding his head, so yeah. <laughs> Danny is in agreement on that one as well. Um, so we have to be really careful about how many different things we're ordering in and, and so on. Karen says, I just got a serger thinking it might have uses for bag making. Have you used your serger for bag making or has anyone? So um, I don't personally use my serger for bag making just because, uh, again, with the limitations on space currently, I don't have a spot to keep my serger set up at all times. And so it's kind of a, a slight annoyance having to take it out of the, the cabinet, um, threading it, getting it all set up, moving my other machine out of the way. Um, that's probably the main reason why I haven't used it lately. Um, I have seen people use the serger in the past for um, attaching fabric to interfacing. On the other hand, I've seen comments in the past where people didn't uh, like the extra bulk of the, the serger threads on their fabric and interfacing. So I guess it's uh, just a matter of personal preference, but um, anyone who's watching live, feel free to pipe in if you like using your serger for bag, ma bag making and Danny will search out your comments and get it up on the screen. Anne says, if using larger items like the bottle you showed, wouldn't we not need to increase the depth of the case? Um, uh, you might need to, I think I mentioned that uh, when I was showing that bottle near the end of the demonstration, um, if you needed to increase the depth of the case, um, if you wanted to use this particular sewing pattern, you could add the extra fabric strip to either side of the zipper like I, I mentioned, or <coughs> you might settle on a different uh, project to begin with. I have a few other patterns with a similar zip around method, but um, have more uh, clearance to them. Um, a couple projects that come to, the mi to mind are the Dab Essential Oil Case or the Amethyst Project Bag. I know I have a few other ones as well. Maybe some of the Minikins pouches might be good for bigger bottles like that if you're looking for cosmetics. Um, maybe better than the Creative Maker Supply Case if you need something really thick. Did you call it on the questions, Danny? Okay. All right, Danny called it on the question, so I apologize if I did not get to your question live, but we'll be back next Sunday answering lots more questions. We do have the giveaway for tonight to get to. So I went down in the studio and tried to pull something that I thought would be useful, but might be a little bit of an extra that we had down there. <coughs> so for tonight's prize, I have a full unopened roll of Pelon Peltex interfacing um, and that will be awarded to one lucky winner. I'll announce the winner next Sunday on Social Sunday so you have until the end of the day this Saturday. All you need to do to enter is to answer this question live where, wherever you watch this video either on Facebook or YouTube and the question is where did you grow up as a child? So me personally I grew up in the Chicago area, Danny did as well. Um, I'd be interested to see where everyone else comes from, so go ahead and answer that question right now. I hope you had a, a great holiday. Um, we're excited to be back um, every Sunday for Social Sunday. I hope you have a great upcoming week and happy sewing. Bye everybody.